Hello and welcome! In this video I want to go over historical correlation of assets. We are considering S&P 500 stocks for this one. Correlations are an important concept not only in trading but also in financial modeling. So correlation or the covariance of assets are inputs for a lot of key financial models. Now these models always take a historical correlation. So they take a certain look back period, say the past year, see how the assets were moving over this time horizon and take this one correlation number slash coefficient over the assets into account. However, the past has shown that specific market crashes or crisis events in general have a distinct impact on correlations. And in this video I want to both show you how you can analyze historical correlations in Python and we also take a look at some correlation crashes in the near past. So let's get started. I've created a list of assets here. So this is simply Apple, Microsoft and Caterpillar. Then I'm just pulling price data starting in the beginning of 2020 and extract the adjusted close column. After that, I'm calculating relative price changes and store that in RedDF return data frame. As a side note, you can also take the log returns here. To check how the daily returns are correlated, you just take the pandas core function on the return data frame. And with that, you see the correlation metrics. So Caterpillar and Apple are rather weakly positively correlated, while Apple and Microsoft are strongly positively correlated. Now these correlation coefficients are calculated taking the whole time horizon since the beginning of 2020 into account. And now we want to find out if that would have been an actual good estimate for the correlation over this time period. And how we are doing that, we are calculating a rolling correlation. So we take a certain time horizon, let's say 90 days, and check how the assets were correlated within those 90 days and pull a time series to see how the correlation coefficients were developing in the past. So I'm setting up a rolling correlation calculation here by applying the rolling function on the return data frame, provide a window, so 90 days, and call the correlation function. So again, instead of taking the whole time horizon, now I'm getting a 90 day look back correlation here. Now, based on what you want to analyze here, maybe a 30 day look back would be more interesting or one year look back, that depends on what you want to see. As I would get empty or NAN in the first 90 rows, I'm just dropping them here, simply using the drop and A function. And this is what we would get. Now, this data frame has quite an interesting structure. What we see is a correlation matrix based on the last 90 days for every single day. Technically, this is a pandas multi-index. So on the first level of the index, you have the dates. And on the second level of the index, you have the asset names. While you have again the asset names as the columns. And the technical challenge, in quotation marks now, is to extract what you want to see. And what you want to see is a time series of one asset versus another one, or also one asset versus multiple other ones. So there are multiple ways to get that. First, and not my preferred choice, would be to simply log for what you're looking for. So you first screen the column by simply indexing for, let's say, Apple. And then you log for all rows on level one. So this is a colon, colon for all rows, so all dates, and only take the Microsoft rows in the second level here. So this is what you would get with that. And that is what you want, right? So we have a time series of the correlation coefficient based on the last 90 days for Apple versus Microsoft. So you could plot that and you would also already see a quite interesting correlation coefficient development between Apple and Microsoft, right? So what you see is that 
Apple and Microsoft, the correlation coefficient between those is strongly fluctuating. And also, interestingly, we never got back to the pre-pandemic level of correlation again until today. Anyhow, as said, this is not the way I would do it. Instead, I would unstack the data frame, so the rolling correlation data frame. So how does it work? Taking my rolling correlation data frame, looking like this, unstacking it, and I would get a data frame like this. So by unstacking, I'm getting a multi-index now on the columns. So if I would just screen for the apple correlation coefficients, I would provide apple here. And now you see I'm getting, this one is always one of course, because apple versus apple. And then I'm getting it both for CAD and Microsoft as a convenient time series. So if I want to compare them and filter out apple here, I would just screen for Microsoft and Caterpillar as you see here. So I'm simply providing them in the list here, Microsoft and CAT. And now I'm getting a time series Apple versus Microsoft and CAT. And I could compare the development of the correlation coefficients between Apple versus Microsoft blue one and CAT orange one, All right? And if we plot that, as you see here, we see that the correlation breakout in the crisis is distinctly stronger for Apple versus CAT than Apple versus Microsoft. Additionally, you even see here that the correlation gets negative around early 2021. So what can you do or what can we do with that going forward? So like, comment, share, obviously, if you're interested in that, is building a dashboard where you can pick assets from an index, say S&P 500, DAX, Nifty, or whatever you're interested in. And then you can analyze the historical correlation between those assets based on a certain look back period. So yeah, I hope this was as interesting for you as it was for me. Thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.